All right, what's up? It's Ambrose Reed once again, Street Chronicles of Hip Hop, walking and talking. So I'm now in the place to be with my man's Glyph Sputnik. You know, he, he on the low, you know, throughout the Chicago scene. Right now we in his stomping grounds. You know what I'm saying? We got Chili Willie behind him, you know what I'm saying? Some tagging and whatnot by Phaser. So that's what's up. But yeah, so on the real, Glyph, go ahead and hit them jewels on me on how you feel about hip hop and what it means to you nowadays. Well, shit. <laughs> nowadays, you know, hip hop is a totally different animal. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, you know, completely commercial. It's like a lot of these rappers out now, they probably wouldn't exist. <laughs> Back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, pivotal events happened that allowed them to be able to uh, do what they're doing now, as far as like, but they don't even, a lot of people don't even acknowledge like uh, real lyricism or like metaphors and similes. And, you know, I've noticed that they took the word like out of the simile, you know, if you know what I mean. It's like, a person would be like, uh, I strike like a cobra. Now it's like, I strike. Cobra, you know what I'm saying? But that, which is kind of cool because it makes things kind of slick in a way. I like some rappers out. Now I'm not gonna diss everybody. Like, I'm angry, dude. But like, uh, I don't know, man. As far as the culture is concerned, a lot of people look the part nowadays, but they don't even have any skills that would be considered uh, involved in hip hop. Like back in the day, if you run into a guy with dreads and a uh, heli handsome jacket and a book bag, you know what I'm saying? You could probably talk to him about like rap and hip hop and he'd be able to like bust out a sketchbook or like bust a freestyle, he'd be ciphering, you know, you know what I'm saying, running around, kicking it, running into different people and shit and so around the city because everybody was into it more like in the 90s and early 2000s, you know, it's like more of a, a rich kind of culture where it was like a lot of people doing it in the city and like you run into random people you didn't know, uh, I'll automatically be able to look at them kind of like Highlander and shit. Oh. Study the art, and, you know what I'm saying? Then you uh, check they play, you know, they'll go at it, swap the buckle a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Then you got a new friend or a new enemy, depending on how it turned out. But nowadays, uh, a lot of people they just want to do a lot of drugs and uh, wear vintage clothing, and you know, they don't, they don't even consider themselves to be hip hop, you know what I'm saying? That's just a title, but. It defined a lot because it's like different fucking elements to the whole situation of hip hop culture. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I believe the media had a lot to do with uh, the way hip hop is now, as far as uh, the people they decide to put on the pedestal, people they decide to put in front of the masses. You know, they pick the people who they want you to look up to. You know what I'm saying? Like the people who they want you to emulate. You know what I'm saying? They want to. They won't exactly get somebody that's outside of the box, somebody who's talking about intellectual things or even just like hyper uh, imaginative kind of topics in their lyrics, you know what I'm saying? Like Poor Righteous Teachers back in the day, L-O-N-S, you know, Leaders of the New School, like uh, Tribe and like Black Moon and Wu-Tang and all the Nas's and things like that, you know what I'm saying? Like that used to make hip hop like a culture where it's like, up close and personal, you know, so you don't have to have like, like a Benz or whatever new Bugatti and shit. People driving these high asp uh, aspirations to make all this money really quickly to like flaunt it, do drugs, and fuck a lot of bitches. You know, I don't know if I can say that. Is that okay? Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> hey, this this is real, so it is what it is. But yeah, man, it's like you know, a magazine, like you know, saying like you can pop you. Uh, multimedia, you know what I'm saying, would be something that I feel is a good platform to like sh shine light on cats that are still doing it for the love and for money as well. Because it's like it's one thing to do something for the love and then not be rewarded with it by capital gain, but it's like at a certain point, you know what I'm saying, you're not in high school anymore, you're not a kid anymore, you got bills to pay, you got a family, and it's like you love doing something, be it art or you know, expressing yourself through rhyme or dance, then it's like the next logical step, the next intelligent step is to uh, somehow make a living off of it so you can continue to do it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people gave up on the culture because they weren't making a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't live 
off of break dancing and doing graffiti, you know what I'm saying? But it's like so many outlets nowadays for people to be able to uh, use those skills and talents and make a living. Because me personally, you know, I started out with graffiti, you know what I'm saying, to some degree. I was always a black book dude, I always had a sketchbook, you know, but I gravitated more towards the characters as opposed to like uh, lines and, uh, you know, letters and whatever, you know what I'm saying? Which is, uh, you know, valid in itself as far as like being able to do a dope character and shit. And uh, also, I MC and I used to break dance, you know, I still can't bust it a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But what? <laughs> but, you know what I mean? It's, I don't know, man, to me it's fun. You know, it's not like, you know, hip hop is supposed to be fun, you know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be like, outside of everything else. It was, to me, it was an alternative to, like, other shit that I saw in the street, for like, games and, like, you know, drugs and all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, back when I was getting into hip-hop, to me, it was, like, something different than everything else, you know? And uh, when it first surfaced in Chicago, it was probably in the 80s. So I didn't know about it until I was, like, 91, you know what I'm saying? I'm 33 now, it's 2013, so it's, like, back in 91. That's when I noticed people with a certain aesthetic, a certain style, a certain way of carrying themselves. And, uh, and uh, you know, and back then, like underground hip hop, you can look, you can see it on BET, you know what I'm saying? People like, just like me in high school, you know what I'm saying? Or like living in a neighborhood similar to mine with a lot of, with a lot of uh, adversities, but they had this positive vibe and this uh, like musical vibe, this very distinctly, you know what I'm saying, uh, cultural richness that, you know, derives from, African people, you know what I'm saying, or like indigenous people, and shit like that, you know what I'm saying, but like in a modern setting, that to me, that's what hip hop was, and that's what it still is, you know, but it's like, uh, those aspects are forced more underground, you know, it's more of an individual thing, you know what I'm saying, it's not like a group thing, like it used to be more of a community, now it's like, uh, it's still a community, you know, people run it to each other, know each other, but it's like, we are all in a matrix, and then, and like, if it's a hundred people, you might have, uh, like, a few different, you know, people spread out throughout that crowd that's into, like, the same kind of things that you're into as far as, like, hip-hop. But back in the day, it'd be, like, a hundred people and, like, more than half of them know what, 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 you know what I'm saying, like, what good music is and what hip-hop is about, you know. But we all got older, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it'd be nice to, like, be able to pass the torch down to the, the younger generation. You know, not like I'm the ambassador to hip hop or some shit, but at least like give people another idea of what they could be doing, you know what I'm saying, to make what they're doing even better. You know what I mean? Like, like tweak it and make it just like more of an organic situation as opposed to, okay, I can just go buy this and buy this and put this on, wear this, and then I look like, you know, whatever popular rapper is out and I'll be able to get far because of that. You know, you know, like, I'd be rewarded because I remind somebody of a famous person as opposed to, like, just being an individual and doing what the hell you do and being good at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, over it. So, especially here in Chicago, you know, there's a lot of negative stuff that the media is focusing on, but it's also a lot of positive things, too. You know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of people, uh, you know, they see the news and, you know, they see something happen in the street, you know, something like that, then they automatically assume that that's happening, like, everywhere, all day, you know what I'm saying, it's Chicago segregated, so it's like, you know, people are like, South Side, no, it's bad, and right now we chilling on Milwaukee, you know what I'm saying, chilling in uh, Northwest, Wicked Park, you know, so. That's what's up. So yeah, once again, Hip Hop You Multimedia Magazine, we out here on the real, we walking the walk and talking the talk. When we come across them, we gonna talk to you. So if you see me on the street, it's Ambrose, man, hit me up and say, man, I wanna speak on hip hop. It's right. done. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace.